Hello and welcome to episode 2 of this RBS number 5. I am building a wooden box that will be amazing when it's done. I've just put the final coat of finish on so it's all looking really good. This circle will be mounted inside that hole and there will just be a little groove left um, in the centre of the box. Sticking out of the groove will be a vertical piece of copper tube like this and that will be made to rotate using an electric motor at a certain speed around the hole like this. That will push a ball up a vertical, uh, sorry, up a curved slope until it gets to the top, whereupon it will be released and will roll down a series of copper tracks that I've yet to design and make until it gets to the bottom, where the ball will automatically be loaded onto the track again. So here's the bearing. I've got to mount that today and that will go inside the whole thing so it will be hidden it will be supported on bits of timber like this and hopefully by the end of the video it will all be beautifully set up and waiting for the electrics which I'll probably do in the next episode. So the first job is I'm going to turn the box over and I've got these little screw mounted feet that I'm going to attach to the bottom of the box. Each one will be slightly adjustable in height so wherever this ends up it can be made completely level, horizontal, plumb and um, be okay to be displayed. So let's get started. Now we all know that rolling ball sculptures drop balls the whole time and one of the really annoying features is when the balls go underneath the sculpture and you can't find them anymore. So I've designed this so that these feet are low enough that any dropped balls don't fit underneath. So I've just done a bit of cutting out and working out exactly what order to do this. Now I've got to put the bearing in place but I can't build the wooden frame first because I wouldn't be able to get the bearing in. So I've got to leave the bearing in there. But um, my main job is to get it structural and level. But I've done a few things in the last hour. On the inner race of the bearing, I've mounted a little bit of sticky foam, and I think that will help with slipping when the motor wheel gets attached. And I've drilled four holes in these four bits of wood. They're quite large holes, so there's a little bit of movement so I can make these bits of wood nice and parallel. So they're parallel, and it's ready to attach it to the inside of the frame. Now, as I said before, I've got to put the bearing in first because I can't get it in once the wood is done. So it's all got to be done in a kind of uh, jigsaw Rubik's cube kind of kind of fashion. What I'm now doing is I've got three bolts dropped down through the inner race and I'm able to turn this round and find the position where the clearance between the three bolts and the hole in the top plate are equal. So I can move the whole thing to the right and left and I can undo the bolts and move the whole thing this way and this way. So this way is kind of central. I just now need to sort it out this way and then I can screw it down. So I've got four little white clamps and I'm going to put some big screws through it as well and yeah, start to actually put the bearing in the right place. Once it's in, I can turn it over and see how I've done. So I've got to move it a little bit that way um, 
the gap on this side is a tiny bit bigger than this way, but this way is okay. So I'm gonna turn it over, undo the bolts and move it along a bit. Now I've got these M8 bolts, which will help me space the gap. How wonderful, it's looking like it's all going to work. I've been thinking for months and months and months about exactly how I'm gonna get this bearing to fit. Now it's fitted loosely, I'm gonna put a whole more bunch of screws into it and make it nice and strong, make sure it's completely level. I'm really happy that it's central enough for it to work well. This will get fitted later, but let's now secure the bearing once and for all. <laughs> There we go. This one and this one, really strong, and they're the ones that the bearing is attached to. These three here will hold up the center circle when that is on the top. These two are just a kind of afterthought to give the whole lot a little bit more strength. So that feels really strong, and obviously the bearing can move. From the top, there's the three parts that will hold the center circle in place. So that'll be glued and screwed down onto there when I'm ready to do it. But for now, I'm gonna leave it loose because it's the only way I can still get and see the top of the bearing. There it is, spinning nicely. But I can put it on and uh, when that's all screwed down and held nice and tight, that will Basically, just look like a finished groove. There we go. Job done for now. So, thanks very much for watching. That is the end of episode two, and in the next episode, I will mount the bearing. Now, what I'm going to do, mount the bearing, mount the motor. Now, what I'm going to do, I've got this little um, rubber wheel that needs to be attached to a motor. So, I need to do the power, the power supply the switch, I've got a speed controller, I need to work out where I'm going to mount that, how I'm going to attach it, where it's all going to be hidden wires. And then this needs to rub against the inside of the bearing, so I need to make a frame. I probably want it sprung loaded in some kind of way and hinged so that this can push on the bearing at all time. You can turn it on, you can turn the speed up, and this will then slowly rotate the bearing round. That will be in the next episode. Please subscribe. I'll see you then. Bye.